Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com, and I want to show you a simple example of how to use Try With Resources in Java properly. The key to the Try With Resources statement is this auto-closable interface right here. As you can see, a whole bunch of interesting classes implemented. You can see the object stream writer, server socket, file image output stream, Anything that should be closed after it's opened implements this interface. And it's a super easy interface to implement. It's only got one method called close. And as long as you've got a class that's implementing that interface, you can use the try with resources construct. Now, let me give you an example of that. I'm going to create a brand new class here. I'm going to call it try with resources example. I'm going to put the go to old main method in there, click finish. And you can see I got the main method, but before I start, I'm going to create a class of my own here. Now I'm going to do a couple of shortcuts here. You probably don't want to do this in production code, but I'm going to create a new class in the same class file called door. It's going to implement that auto closable interface that we just talked about. Now, as soon as I write this code, it says, Hey, you got to implement that inherited abstract method. And I'm like, well, I can do that. Just implement it. Don't be problematic. And there we go. A nice little close method right here. And this class is now auto closable. We've got the door. It's got a close method. Why don't I just do a system.out.println that says the door is closed. And all of a sudden our Close method has a functional implementation. And now that's all I do to have to, to set myself up to use the try with resource construct. Watch this. I'm going to actually come over here, say, I want to try to create an instance of that door. I'm going to trim down that throws exception part there because that's going to complicate things. Create a new instance of this door class. Put my try block after it. This is where I write all of my code. And now this code guarantees that when it runs, this close method will be invoked. I don't have to do anything more. This may actually bother some people. I don't even have a catcher finally block there. I'll add that in just a minute. But watch this. If I run this code, even though I have never invoked the close method directly, that close method gets called right at the end of this try block. I'm guaranteed, even if an exception is thrown, throw new runtime exception. Even if an exception is thrown in this method, that method close is always going to be invoked. You can see even with that exception, we still close the resource. And this is how you can avoid resource leak. So if you've got a, a database connection, if you've got a connection to the file system, a, a server socket, make sure that you use the, the automatic resource management feature, ARM feature of Java, using the try with resources type of syntax. Now, I'm going to improve this a little bit. I'm going to have a, well, I guess a door could swing. So public void swing. Let's swing this door. System.println, the door is swinging. That all saves now in my try block. I'm not going to throw that exception right away. I'm just going to say door.swing. You'll notice that this door object has scope within that try block. And of course, you know, I didn't put the catch in here, but you should always have a catch in there, right? Catch your exception and do something. And, you know, if you're really clever, you can even add a finally block. I'm not going to do anything in these blocks, but it's just nice to see them there. And you can imagine writing some code. But you'll notice now I'm going to call this swing method first. And this close method will be called after it. So if I say run as a Java application, boom, the door is swinging and the door is closed. And I never explicitly called this close method. And again, even if I throw that runtime exception and run this, you notice that close method always gets called. And that's beautiful. That makes sure that, well, if somebody comes in and starts swinging this door when they leave, well, that door is always going to get closed. That might even reduce our heating bills. So yes, my dad sees McKenzie would love that. Now, 
There are some problems that happened when they introduced this try with resources construct in Java. I'm gonna space that out there to make it look a little bit more handsome. One of the problems was the fact that, well, you can run into a situation where two exceptions get thrown. So imagine I've got a swing exception and a close exception. I'm running out of space on this screen. Maybe I should have made my font smaller. But I've got a swing exception, I've got a close exception, and let's just imagine that this swing class throws the swing exception, and this close method throws the close exception. I think I called swing a class, but it's uh, just a method there. So imagine swing throws the swing exception, the close throws the th close exception, and then when we're actually writing this code, inside these methods, these exceptions get thrown. Now, you know, you shouldn't explicitly throw uh, an exception like this if uh, you're writing code, because that'll always happen, but this is just an example to demonstrate. And of course, I caught myself there. It should be throw, not throw. You throws in the clause, throw when you throw an exception. But now I have this interesting situation. When this code runs, the swing method is going to throw an exception. Normally, prior to Java 7, when try with resources was introduced, you could only have one exception thrown at a time. But now notice this close method can throw an exception as well. When I run this swing method, the swing method throws an exception. We know that even if an exception is thrown, we know that the close method is going to run. But here we also get a close exception. So imagine I said in this catch block, hey, give me the class of the exception that is being caught here. What do you think that would end up being? Do you think that if I asked for the class, whether the class being thrown into that catch block would be swing? Do you think it would be close? Do you think it would be both? Do you think this would run twice? Because we've got two exceptions being thrown. Well, let's take a look at what happens here. Boom, it's actually the swing exception. So what happens to the close exception, right? Well, I mean, both of them are being called. When I run this, I'll run it one more time. Boom, you can see that the close method is being called even though the swing method throws an exception. We only get a listing of the swing exception here. Where is that close exception? Well, they introduced a new concept to deal with this called the suppressed exception. And so here, if I say system.out.println, I can say e.get suppressed. Notice it says here, returns an array containing all the exceptions that were suppressed. So that close exception is being suppressed. Now I know that there's one, so I'll say it index zero. By the way, you should check to make sure that there are things there are suppressed exceptions in that list, in that array, um, and then maybe you should loop through them. But in this example, I know one is being thrown, it'll be at index zero, and so I'm explicitly going to try and print it out here. So notice I print out the actual exceptions class, and then I'm gonna print out the suppressed exception. Watch what happens here. We end up having the swing method called. Even though it throws an exception, we close the door, we then get the swing exception as what you might call the primary exception. And then after the primary exception is thrown, we get the close exception afterwards. And so that gets handled as a suppressed exception. And so that's how a suppressed exception works. The idea is there is this possibility when you're using this try with resources construct that more than one exception will be thrown. The exception that gets thrown in the try block, the primary exception is the one that's passed to the catch. And then any subsequent exceptions that were thrown during the closing of any resources get attached as suppressed exceptions. And that's how try with resources works. And that's why we have to handle suppressed exceptions. And there you go, that's how easy it is to use the try with resources statement in Java. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you subscribe to Ion Tech and head over to theserverside.com 
We've got lots of great tutorials on Java, Jakarta EE, Git, DevOps tools, and enterprise development in general.